Riding at Home with ABOR's Housing Economist, Claire Losey. Hey guys, so excited to be here with you today. This is Emily Shinevere. I'm the CEO of the Austin Board of Realtors and super, super excited to bring to you Dr. Claire Losey, one of our newest staff members and uh, new housing economist to Avor. Claire, thanks for hopping on today. Thanks so much for having me. Of course. Well, guys, members, um, we're excited to bring you this kind of weekly audio format of just market updates, what's happening with the economy at large, what's happening with the, our housing market at a local level, and, and maybe sometimes a national level. Level. We woke up today to some big economic news, so it's a little, it'll be a little different than it might be on the go forward because I hope it's not every day that a major bank is failing. Claire, you want to tell us what happened? Absolutely. So actually in March, Signature Bank and Silicon Valley Bank both failed. And recently, just actually today, JP Morgan announced that it would be acquiring um, Silicon Valley Bank in the wake of its collapse. So all of the deposits will be moved over to JP Morgan now. So people can get their money, which is a good thing. Um, but what is the kind of like, uh, give me the dumbed down version of what it means when banks fail like this and, and what it means maybe as, as consumers will react to it on the go forward. Absolutely. So it is important to remember that depositors are insured up to a value of $250,000. So it's not as if when a bank fails, deposits are automatically diminished um, per se. So most most creditors, or excuse me, most consumers are going to recover their money if a bank fails. However, of course, it has ripple effects within the broader economy and overall could signal that there's broader financial instability within the broader economy. In the case of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank, they were sort of acutely posed to experience this kind of issue in the sense that they were very exposed in particular aspects of the market, i.e. technology, particularly in the case of Silicon Valley Bank. They were heavily invested in, of course, the Silicon Valley and those startups. And of course, if there's any sort of downturn with the startups and they start having issues within their own entities financially, that plays over into their ability to um, keep banks solvent, so to speak. But all in all, whenever a bank fails, it really can send broader ripple effects into the overall economy and can certainly make consumers more wary of what's happening, not just within the broader market, but also what's happening within their own banks and can make them a little bit less inclined to make those big purchases. And so this week, also the Fed meets again. We'll talk about interest rates for a minute. And, you know, let, let me ask you before we talk about just what you generally expect from them, what kind of implication does a bank failure have as they're heading into the, the conversation that they were already prepared to have? Or is there any connection between them? Absolutely. There is certainly a connection in the sense that the Federal Reserve's we have to remember their two key mandates are price stability and maximum employment. Of course, price stability is, i.e., minimizing inflation and maintaining that 2% target that they've outlined. The key concern with the bank failure is that it could send consumers into kind of this frenzy in which they could be pulling out large swaths of their deposits, and that affects the money flow available to the Federal Reserve. So more broadly speaking, what they're really concerned about right now is, of course, broader inflation within the overall economy, but they also want to ensure that consumers' sentiments toward the banking industry remain fairly dependent on it and that they aren't suddenly going to be pulling out large swaths of deposits again. So, in terms so simply of said, it's fair to say we need people to trust that banks are going to be fine. And we generally need people not to move their money quickly out of these banks so that we keep them stable. Right. We need faith in our financial markets more broadly. And that's right. what the Fed is counting on. In terms of whether they cut rates, maintain them, or hike, broadly speaking, expectations are that the Federal Reserve will hike rates one more time at least and that will occur probably this week. We'll see a 25 basis point hike in the federal funds rate. That, of course, has an effect on the mortgage market. 
the mortgage market is heavily tied to the 10-year Treasury yield. And generally speaking, whenever the Federal Reserve raises the Fed funds rate, it actually increases demand for safer assets, i.e. government bonds. And so that pushes the yield on the 10-year Treasury up. And the 30-year fixed mortgage rate tends to move in tandem with the 10-year Treasury yield. So we generally expect the mortgage rate to increase slightly in the near term. But overall, it should remain lower than it did um, at the end of last year in October and November when we saw close to 7% rates. And so you sort of hinted at the expectation that they're going to raise one more time now, but does that mean that people should be holding their breath that they're going to lower later? What's your advice in in regards to agents working with with clients who are saying, I just want to see, you know, if I can't get it back to low again? Sure, sure. I think we have to keep in mind here that the broad consensus is actually that we could experience a recession nationally in the last quarter of this year, or perhaps into 2024, I want to stress that Austin is very well poised and will be able to weather any such downturn quite well. We have an extremely strong labor market, relatively speaking, and our housing market, although we've experienced somewhat of a downturn from those abnormal highs, we still remain very strong with respect to our housing market as well. But anyways, if um, there is some sort of recession, then the Federal Reserve may cut rates. However, I would encourage realtors not to tell their clients to expect rate cuts, at least in the short term. And and relatively negligible, right? I mean, I don't think that anybody expects us to get back to a 2.8, 2.75-person interest rate Right. Maybe ever, but certainly not soon. Right. Exactly. So even if um, the Fed does cut rates later on this year or into next year, the mortgage rate will probably still remain in the 5% range, maybe dip down into the high fours, but it's certainly not going back to the threes anytime soon. And for the time being, the mortgage interest rate has been relatively stable over the past several months again, since peaking in about October, November of last year, we've, we've seen it hovering in the low six range, generally speaking. And so agents obviously understand and consumers do too. I think now that rates have changed so dramatically that interest rates are only one aspect of your overall buying power. What are you seeing in terms of price appreciation? What are we expecting kind of at this early, early uh, start of the summer, I should say. Sure. So price appreciation has certainly declined, i.e. the rate of growth in home prices has actually turned negative year over year. We saw about a 14% decline from March of 2022 to March of this year. So all in all, that's actually a good thing when you think about it in relation to higher mortgage interest rates, because you actually need a decline in home prices in conjunction with higher interest rates to maintain the same levels of affordability. So that 14% year-over-year decline in home prices actually corresponds almost perfectly with the decline in affordability induced by higher mortgage interest rates. So all in all, we're actually seeing, relatively speaking, the same buying power um, that we were in March of this year, in in April of this year, that we were um, this time last year. So, you know, just another way to think about that is if it was 14 more percent, you're referred to 14 percent higher last year, but my interest rate was X, Y, Z points lower. It's just it's a matter of moving the needle one way or the other. But your overall buying power, the impact of what a buyer can and cannot access in Austin is still relatively the same. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Claire, as we head towards, you know, getting into the depths of summer and I'm sure what will be a hot one again this year. What what are you what are you sensing from the market? What are you seeing just in terms of the numbers early, early, just this being the first day of May? Sure. So the ever popular spring home buying season is perhaps proving to be somewhat less popular this year, as would be expected. However, we have seen an uptick this week in pending sales. So that's indicating that 
um, listings that turned into pending sales, you know, probably in in March, maybe early in April, are going to be trickling through to actual closed sales sometime in May. So generally speaking, we should see an uptick in sales, but it will probably be lower than, you know, we would generally see this time of the year. But moving into the summer, we have seen broad indications in the market that home buyers are still willing to purchase, um, sellers are still willing to list their homes. So we shouldn't see uh, this huge abrupt anomaly within the market where we're seeing this big decline in, in listings or sales. But again, just a correction, getting used to this new normal of higher interest rates and just a little bit more shakiness in the overall economy. Awesome. Well, guys, thanks so much for listening in to our first edition of Driving at Home with ABOR's Housing Economist, Dr. Claire Losey. We'll be back next week with some more information. If you have an idea about what we should be talking about or want to give us some direction on the kind of information that Claire could provide that would be helpful for you and your you and your clients, please feel free to email us at communications at abor.com and we'll take it into consideration and take your feedback. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys. Have a great week.